Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about the camera setup change that I'm doing here in the office. I've been an avid Canon user for some time since the 60D and the 70D that I'm talking to you guys on right now. But I want to share with you guys how and why I chose the GH5 to be able to transition to and what's causing me to leave the Canon system setup. This is TK. Let's go ahead and talk about the GH5. This is the, in short, the new setup that I'm going to be going with, uh, definitely with the GH5. This is the 4K, the, my, the GH5, the Panasonic GH5. Uh, this is body only. I did not pick up the one with the lens. This is the lens. Uh, you were able to pick it up separately. There was a couple of options available. They're all basically the new setup. This is one of the new ones that they released at the same time. Now it does have the Leica branding. It is compatible directly. It's a micro four third lens. So this is only gonna work here. And the reason why you see the Metabones adapter here is because I wanna be able to use my, adapt, my camera lenses that I've had from Canon for the years. So when you have good glass, you definitely wanna be able to keep using it. And this will help me do that. The first thing I wanna go through with you guys is this is uh, the Panasonic lens. This is a Lumix lens made designed specifically for the GH5. It's a micro four thirds lens. You'll notice it's different uh, fitting. Uh, we do get, this is a, well, again, 12 to 60 millimeter f2.8 to f4.0. So it's a variable aperture, but the main benefit of it is it's a really good weather sealed, weather treated at least uh, lens. It does come with the hood and you're able to basically just reverse it, put it on and then align the dots. And then when you're done, push it on, reverse it. Oops. And it goes back and it's perfect. Uh, designed specifically for the Lumix and it works with the GH5, even the GH4. If you have the GH4, this is gonna be a great lens. I'll give you guys a link in the description. Uh, so far, really nice, definitely like it. It's not super heavy. It's not as heavy as some of the other lenses that I've had, but again, it's only a you know, 12 to 60 millimeter, so it's not gonna go that far. The other thing I have, of course, is the Metabones adapter. This is the one specifically with the speed booster option. I did remove the bottom leg so that I don't have them showing as much. Uh, and then again, what you get here is the ability to fit Canon lenses over into the Micro Four Thirds system. You'll notice how it's a little bit protruded in the back. It does actually adapt directly into the uh, system. And that forces me or gives me the ability to use, let's say, a lens like this. This is my Sigma um, F1.4 30 millimeter lens and it snaps on. So now it becomes an extension in my lens and now will definitely fit into my GH5. So I can still use my Canon lenses. And if I want to release, I used to use a little clamp here, switch it over, we're good. I put my lens down and I can switch over to other lenses. I do have another lens as well. This is a uh, 50 millimeter F1.8 lens. It's about a $250 lens, but really good, like a prime lens. Uh, that's definitely on the cheap end that you can use. It's plastic, it's not the best build, but it does the job and it works great with the Metabones adapter. Here is the camera, the GH5. Again, this is the body only. Um, I picked it up and it was, uh, I did a pre-order on it, so I did receive it right away. We do have the option here to be able to use one of the extension battery. This is the door for it. This is for the power it on. Uh, we have remote functionality here. The door is for it right there. This is the SD card door. It does support dual SD card, which is also a main benefit that I like. The fact that I can have the redundant SD cards here and I never have to worry about it. When one of my SD cards dies, did I lose my footage? Definitely there. And I have them running in, uh, in parallels, which means essentially in RAID for, for uh, computer users. Um, the main one is bared directly on number two, so I can pick up number one, take it, connect to it, and then we are created. Uh, as far as SD cards, I did go with the Extreme Pro. This camera does support uh, the Extreme Pro 2. So this is the SDXC camera, uh, uh, sorry, memory cards up to 280 megabytes. And I got two of those sitting in there in parallel. So I definitely have the main benefit. And we do know that they're the new ones, you'll notice that the pins on the back are higher. So there we have more pins. So your SD card readers also would need to be compatible with these things. Otherwise you won't get the full speed. Um, on the, the left side, and I'll get to the back in a second, we have additional ports. Of course, we have the microphone. This is where you'd be able to connect an external mic, which I do recommend and I will be using with this camera, um, as I am gonna be using my uh, external H5 to process the audio. We do have headphone jack, which is definitely appreciated, very good. And you'll notice everything is kind of like nice and tucked in, so it has that ceiling and weather water assistance a little bit. So here, headphones, you can monitor your audio straight on the camera. And here on the back, we have a full-size HDMI and USB Type-C connector, which gives us A, charging, B, connection to the PC, and C, fast transfer, which is really nice. Everything is connected, closed. Um, on the top, we, uh, we have directly just a shoe here and hot shoe that we'll be able to connect. It does come with a clip covering it. We do not have a pop-up flash. That's something you want to be aware of if you're expecting it. There is no pop-up flash here. Uh, we have a couple of configuration dials here for the different video mode, manual mode, uh, and of course on and off to be able to turn it on. 
a wireless op, uh, button here. Well, actually an LED telling us if wireless is on. Uh, the ability to turn on video. I love the fact that the button is on top, not on the back. I don't have to fumble for the back to get it to turn on. Uh, control for white balance, ISO, uh, of course, uh, exposure, and of course a function button here. And a jog dial, there's one here and one there. And of course the shutter release and then you know halfway for focus. On the back is where it gets very interesting. Um, we'll notice that the setup is not that different from the GH4. It did get upgraded a little bit. I do want to mention at the bottom, we only have one uh, tripod mount at the bottom. And we do have a sensor here that we can use if you're going to use the extended battery option, but I'm not using this right now. Some of the accessories will use those, and this seems pretty good. Uh, the last thing I want to mention, it does use the same standard size batteries as the GH4. So they didn't change the battery size. If you have a GH4, you're definitely solid there. Batteries should not be that expensive. You can even use the extended battery connection, the live power directly in, the one that comes from the GH4 it works perfectly here as I'm using it. So you'll notice, again, same size, batteries just fit exactly. Open the door and close and you're set. So one of the main reasons why I got this camera is the ability to be able to do this. Open up the lens. Now I have this and I have this configured correctly in here. You'll notice the audio is picking up right away. It does have built-in microphones. Um, but the main reason why I picked it up is the fact that we have this articulating camera, the flip out screen. You can actually film yourself using the camera and see exactly what's on the screen. Now, obviously I don't have a lens on this. It's not gonna show anything. Uh, but once you're using it and you're using it the right way, this could be a very, very useful tool to be able to help you do your videos, uh, keep everything in focus, touch to focus, all of the good things. Now we have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, 4K capability, of course, that was on the GH4 actually. This is not new to this. Functional button, function, and then of course function four, which you can pre-program. The iris uh, is automatically recognized. You'll notice there's a proximity sensor. The moment I put my finger there, it turns it off. All of the things that I love about this camera is the fact that it tells me or gives me what I wanted out of the you know Canon 80D. And that was something that I didn't get with the Canon 80D. Battery life is pretty good. Uh, you notice I have anti-shake here, which means auto-focusing is there. And then of course I can just turn it off and turn it on. The other thing again, the auto button here, which is very, very nice. I can actually see it from the front. All I need to do is just reach, push, and I know I'm recording. Uh, now it does have wireless, which gives us the ability of uh, logging into it and using a remote app that I have installed on one of my phones. So I can use an, another phone if I have to put the camera a little bit away from me to be able to connect to it via Wi-Fi and control it. Very, very nice, very good. I think overall from the fact that a, without the lens itself, it actually feels pretty light. So let's go ahead and put in the, the Lumix lens. Now this is the Leica 12 to 60 millimeter lens. Uh, again, standard, align the red to the red and then connect. Fits perfectly. Uh, it feels like a DSLR. It gives me the weight of the DSLR that I expect from it. It has some nice weight to it. And again, when I'm out and I want to just shoot like a vlog style, I can do it this way. Or if I'm, let's say even at an event and I'm by myself, I have the ability of seeing and making sure that I'm in the right frame. Uh, and of course that it's tracking correctly. Autofocus has been really solid on uh, with the couple of tests that I've done with this. I'll give you guys more uh, samples of the GH5 video uh, and audio directly uh, recorded onto this. Here's a quick sample. I am using the onboard audio, so I do apologize if the audio doesn't sound the best. Uh, this is in the office. It's not outside. Um, I'm using it straight. So the main benefit again is I can see myself in the lens. I can actually be directly talking to the camera without having to lose focus. I have my audio media there. If I can see if I'm peaking or if I'm not. Um, of course, I can keep control of all of this using either a phone or directly touching the screen and setting the focus on it. Very, very nice. And the hardware is capable to do, of, do so much more. So. I'll show you guys and I'll actually do a video entirely done in 4K using GH5 in the, uh, very soon, so keep an eye out for that. But definitely a quick sample of what it looks like directly from the camera using uh, the onboard lenses. And I think this is running at 1080p 60 right now, so uh, the next video that you guys will see will be at 1080p, uh, well sorry, will be at 4K. I just wanted to keep it in the same format as the rest of the video so that you guys can enjoy this. At the end of the day, the reason really why I went to the GH5 is because the GH5 is what I really wanted the ADD to be, and that's where Canon kind of dropped the ball. Uh, they gave us such a small incremental update between the 70 and the 80D that it really didn't make sense for anybody that had the 70D to really transition over to it. I mean, the benefits really did not outweigh the extra cost that they gave you there. 
Uh, I think the GH5 has a lot of functionalities that GH4 built on and a lot of people loved about. And I think that's the reason why I went with it. Uh, the fact that we have dual SD card, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, the ability to just do net, you know, DLNA sharing directly off of it, uh, the ability to have that flip screen, that is by far my number one benefit of these cameras. And the reason why I haven't gone to any other system is the fact that you need to have a flip screen whenever you're working, especially for YouTube content creators. You need to see what you're doing. Otherwise, you're gonna be taking these blind shots and you're gonna take a lot of guesses and sometimes you're in and sometimes you're not in frame or you're not in focus. Touch to focus, the ability to have a really good uh, compatibility with different lenses. The Metabone adapter opens up my opportunities there. I can keep using my Canon lenses. I can even pick up new Canon lenses and still use GH5 or you know Panasonic Micro Four Thirds based lenses. And I did pick up one lens at least. So I do have one like a daily driver kind of a lens if I want to just walk out and do whatever I want. And I know that it has the uh, you know the uh, the image stabilization built into the lens as well as the body of the camera. So this will be really good for kind of like a, a shotgun. Just go out, just start taking video, and then using the stabilization on the camera. But again, in the office, if I want to take really good, beautiful pictures, I have the f1.4 uh, prime lens, 30 millimeter from Sigma. I think it really does the job and I love the fact how it comes out. And with the speed booster, it works perfectly with my GH5. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I think the main benefit, at least in the near future, you guys are gonna notice is that most of my videos will go to 1080p 60 at the base, and then also some options to go to 4K depending on the content. But other than that, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Again, like and subscribe as usual, and I'll see you guys in the next video.